Rule number one of my eight rules to 8% as I came up with whole new content for this tour is focus on revenue. Most insurance agents wake up, we get in the office, it's 9 a.m., I'm gonna get some coffee, I'm gonna go talk to Susie by the printer, I'm gonna go hang out with Joe in his office, I'm gonna go to two hour lunch, I need to make calls, but uh, I, you know what, I don't know, I need to get all the details there, I need a script, what do I say, well what if they give me an objection, I'll make calls tomorrow, and before you know it, the whole day is gone. Successful people wake up and they make sales every single day. It's not an option, it's a decision. In our office, we have a sales team and I tell them, hey, you show up, you spend eight, nine, 10 hours with me and you go home and you don't make a sale today, that's a problem. You show up and you don't focus on revenue, creating sales and helping people and you go home and you sold nothing? Why did we show up to begin with? Who believes in what you sell? Who believes that if you sell it, you help someone? Who believes that when you sell it, you leave them in a better situation than when you found them? Or I hope you wouldn't sell it. I believe that you should believe that if you were to believe in what I believe, that you would start doing a lot more of this. Because I believe if you show up and you're sitting in front of a prospect and you can help them, you can put them in a better situation, you have the product or service that they need, and you do not close the deal, you do not sell them, you are doing them a disservice. Who actually fully believes that? Then why don't we start thinking that when we walk in? Why don't we start thinking that in every house, on every call? Because our family got a little bit of a rude awakening on December 26, 2020. Day after Christmas, my mom's best friend's husband, who we've known for several decades, not too many decades, I'm only 30, but you know, several decades, okay. And my mom called me the evening of December 26, 2020, just a few weeks ago. And she said, Cody, Jeff just passed away in his driveway and was electrocuted by a light pole while he was painting it. It was my mom's best friend. And her husband's the one that passed away. You know, one of the first thing that came to mind for me what do you think it was? What, was? what do you think my first thought was? Well, I wish my first thought would have been, I hope he has life insurance. It was, but really the question I asked myself is, why didn't you get in front of him to make sure? Because what most people don't know is he was on my warm market list a decade ago. I didn't get in front of him. I don't blame them, I blame me. I could have put in the effort, I could have followed up, I could have been better on the phone, I could have went 12 touches, I could have drove to the house, I could have done whatever it took to get in front of him, but I didn't. That's a problem. How would you have felt in that moment? Are there friends and family that if that were to happen tomorrow, how would you feel? I can tell you that I should have been better. I should have been better. And I can also fortunately say that he had plenty of life insurance, supposedly, which I don't think you can ever have enough. An accident policy and the family's well taken care of. However, I know that if I get in that home, he probably ends up with more. Everything shifts when you start to focus on helping everyone you can. And when you can help them, you should, or you're doing them a disservice. 
Who's going to commit now to focus on revenue, to push the bottom line, to increase your income, and to change your financial future forever in 2021? Thank you. Rule number two, focus on your potential. My wife and I just bought a uh, three quarters of a million dollar home in Springfield, Missouri, which, you know, in, in big old Missouri, it's, it's, it's pretty nice. And I looked at her on day two and I said, babe, it's still too small. I said, I, 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 you deserve a better life. I deserve a better life. I need to show up more. Who else wakes up a little bit disappointed, dissatisfied, driven, knowing that you got a lot more in the tank, knowing you can go a lot farther than what you've gone? In those moments, I'm typically focused on the now and where I currently sit versus my actual, real, true potential. <clears throat> I want to challenge you today to start to focus on your true potential because the moment I think I've arrived, I'm going to get arrogant, I'm going to have an ego, and I can promise you, none of us will ever actually arrive. We will never actually reach our full, true potential. But by being focused on chasing it, Instead of where you currently sit, you will force yourself to level up. You will force yourself to get better. You will force your life to get a lot better. Most people think they've made it. Most people think they can't get a whole lot better. Most people think maybe they can't work a whole lot harder. Maybe they think their income can't go up that much. I'm here to tell you, if you start focusing on your true potential, you're not even close, and I'm not either. Everything will shift the moment that you start focusing on what your actual true potential is. Far too many people focus on where they currently sit instead of where they can go, where they can end up, how good life can get. But you have to focus on your potential instead of where you currently are. Say yes if that makes sense. Yes. Say yes if you're with me. Yes. Say yes if you're gonna do this in 2021. Yes. Good, here's what I know. The more energy you guys give me today, the better I perform. Okay? Okay? That's how, that's how this thing works, all right? And I'm guessing that the better I perform, the more motivated you leave, the more nuggets you get, and the more money you make in 2021, am I right? Yeah, that's right. Good. Thank you for being engaged. Who's going to apply to rule number two in 2021? Excellent. Rule number three, focus on short-term targets. Here's what I mean. Most people focus on an entire year. We plan to do this tour. I planned the whole tour in like 13 minutes and released it 13 days before. And said I wanted a thousand to register. We, we didn't meet the target. Why did I do that? Because I've learned when I have insane, crazy, massive, short-term targets that it pulls me in that direction. Who didn't hit, the, and, 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 and when I ask some of these questions, like th this is your chance to look inward, do an internal audit, a self-assessment, and be honest with yourself. And right now, we're all family, this is the time to do it, trust me, okay? Who has the courage to raise your hand and say, I did not reach my goal in 2020. And if you didn't have one, you didn't reach it either, by the way. Okay, good. Not good, but good. Thank you for being honest, okay? Why do you think you didn't hit it? Okay. Good. Good answers? Also, great answer. What else? 
Yeah, well, not a good answer, but thank you for being honest. Okay, well, who else? Excuses. Excuses, yep, for sure. What else? Who else? Boom! And the lights go out because you didn't hit your goal. <laughs> We're not turning them back on until you recommit. <laughs> All right, so here's the real reason, okay? Here's the real reason. Yeah, who, who, who all has spoke in front of a room before? Okay, the, 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 you'll learn that you gotta like just go with the flow, man. Right? That's what I loved about Inky Johnson. I don't know who, who all was at Eight Percent Nation 2020 in September. Okay, there, let's make sure the rest of you are there in 2021. By the way, Inky Johnson's on stage. He's one of the best motivational speakers on the planet. The mic stops working. He keeps talking. My audio guy is up there, literally taking this off and put it up through his shirt and like reconfiguring him his whole body. And I'm like, the dude just keeps going. I'm like, how freaking impressive is that? I learned something just by watching a screw up. There's a moment to learn every chance you get. And if it wouldn't have been for me learning that from Inky, who knows what I would have just done when the lights went out. Here's the real reason you didn't hit your goal in 2020. Before I ask that question though, what do most people do when they don't hit it? Quit, give up, Quit, give up make excuses, what else? Lower them, yes, yes. Here's the real reason you didn't hit it. And it's gonna surprise everyone in the room. It wasn't big enough. And I always get faces just like that, by the way. Okay, so thank you. I do. You're like, huh? You didn't, I didn't hit it, Cody, so why would I need it to be bigger? It was too big because I didn't hit it. I didn't reach it. It didn't happen. The reason you didn't hit it is it wasn't big enough. And what I mean by that is, if it's big enough, it will challenge you. If it's big enough, it will motivate you. If it's big enough, it will constantly pull you in that direction. The real reason why we didn't hit our goal in 2020 for those that didn't is because it wasn't big enough. It didn't challenge you. You didn't wake up so scared to death of this massive freaking number that you went for it every single day. She mentioned not working hard enough. The bigger it is, the harder I work. The bigger it is, the harder I work. We pushed on this tour about as hard as we ever pushed on anything. It had close to 600 agents register across the four cities. You have to push the limit. You have to challenge yourself. And I'm telling you the reason why you didn't hit your goal is because it was too small. Backwards, I know, but the bigger it gets, the more attention I give it. So here's what I do now. It's gotta be so massive, it scares me to death. There's gotta be so much fear associated with it that it actually gets your attention. And then, once it's massive, step number one, step number two is, you have to tell everyone. The more publicly you make it, the more you could possibly embarrass yourself. And trust me, I wanna do insane massive things to where I could end up embarrassing myself. That's when I know I got my attention. And the thing is, like in 2018, we threw 8% Nation, in a club area at Nissan Stadium, that's, that's insane. Everybody's like, who's this kid at the time, 27 years old doing this and why? Spent over a half a million dollars on the event. Planned it 90 days later in the middle of October, in the middle of, middle of uh, actually the end of October in health insurance and Medicare season, that's really smart. But it got my attention. I said, no matter what, I'm not giving up. No matter what, I'm gonna keep pushing. Like most, I mean, most people don't know this, my first sponsor, they, get, they, they, they said, I'll, I'll give you 10 grand, but if it doesn't happen, 
do we get our money back? That's a, that's a problem. And I told him, I said, hey, there is none of this, what if it doesn't happen? That creates doubt. You can say it all you want, but I'm not listening to it. It's happening. The secret is to set short-term targets that pull you in a positive forward offensive posture and that scare you into so much fear. Most people, when they set a goal, though, it's private. It's on paper in their nightstand. <laughs> it's in the notes on their phone. And nobody knows. Why? Because if I don't hit it, I didn't embarrass myself. Nobody knew. That's a problem. Put yourself in a position in 2021 where you either show up or you embarrass yourself. And we wrote at the top earlier, show up anyway. And I'm telling you, if it challenges you, if it's big enough, you'll show up anyway. Guaranteed. Rule number four, never quit. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. We did a virtual conference in 20, uh, uh, last April. Not because we weren't gonna do a real one, just because I wanted to do a virtual one too. And we thought about a theme. I said, okay, we got 2,500 agents registered for this. There's gonna be a lot of new agents. What should the theme be? And I said, if you don't quit, you can't fail. I've said that a lot. I said it earlier, life's gonna get really good as long as you don't choose to quit. Quitting is an option. Quitting is a choice. Quitting is a decision. And please decide now that it's never going to happen. Because I'm telling you, there's people in the room right now that are thinking about quitting. This is the toughest career on planet Earth. But it should be if it's the most financially rewarding. There's more millionaires in the insurance industry than any other industry in the world. So why would it be easy? More than real estate, by the way. Like, my family wants me to sell them a home. They don't always want me to sell them insurance. Like, let's, let's keep it real. Like, this is not easy. Like, please sell me a home. Please sell my home when I'm ready. Here's what we're going to do right now, though. I want us as a group to make a commitment for those that want to participate. Stand up if you are going to choose right now and make the decision that you are never going to quit. And that you know, as long as you don't, life is going to get really good. If you're thinking about quitting, stay seated. Because right now we are choosing that it's never going to happen. Good. If not, I was going to come back and pick you up, man, because I'm not letting you quit, bro. Okay? Thank you for being honest, by the way. Okay? Appreciate that. I'm telling you, though, as long as you make the choice that I'm not going to quit. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how hard, hard it gets. I don't care what happens in my life. I'm going to show up anyway. Be seated, thank you. Give yourselves a hand. I remember being 16 years old, work, going to work at Little Apple Market in Rogersville, Missouri. I'm supposed to work at four o'clock, four to 10, part-time, it's 3.30. And I'm throwing up at home. And I go to my dad, and I'm like, hey, I, I don't feel well. I do not feel like going to work today. Who's ever felt like, I don't want to go to work today? Right? All of us. My times 100. <laughs> okay? Maybe 1,000, you know? And he said something to me that changed my life forever. I don't, I don't want to go to work. I'm throwing up. He said, you do whatever you want to do but you know what I would do. I'm like, gosh dang it, come on dad, come on. Guess what? I went to work, I went to work. It's not okay to quit. It's not okay to not show up. It's a choice. I've seen my dad go to work in April, at April 1st, it'll be 32 years in the insurance industry. He's never missed a day of work. Now there are some fortunate circumstances for that to be true. There's a lot of moments I can tell you 
that have nothing to do with circumstances that he could have chose to stay at home with a tummy ache. <laughs> Life gets really good as long as you choose not to quit. And that's not mentioned enough in our industry, by the way. Because as long as you decide right now, I'm never going to quit. It's not an option. It's not a choice. I'm choosing to win. Life will get incredible. Rule number four, never quit. Rule number five. I went to Grant Cardone's $50,000 mastermind in February of 2020. And he talked about... I got three nuggets out of it. Talked about a lot of stuff for two days after the conference. But I got three nuggets out of it and paid a lot of money to learn them. Who wants to know what they were? Let me, get, let me help you get the, 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 the return on your admission price today. Okay, here we go. Okay, number one, number one, it goes back to rule number, it goes back to rule number one, which was focus on revenue. Like he asked a question to the group in there and said, he said, where's the best place to put a booth or a sales table at an event, at a conference? And I'm like, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I have a conference, and I don't know. That's a problem. <laughs> and he said, right outside the bathroom. I'm like, everybody's gonna go there at some point. He's right. <laughs> the creativity was always focused on doing everything he could to help others. Number two was creating your ideal life. Like most people don't think about this. It never gets talked about. My wife and, our, and I are always doing this, by the way. We are planning our ideal life. What's it look like? Where do we live? How do we travel? What do we drive? How many team members do we have? How many companies do we have? How, many, how much cash in the bank do we have? How many insurance agents have we helped? I want to challenge you to do this at some point. Start to think about how you can create and envision the future of your ideal life. What does it look like? Because I can promise you, you go there in the mind before you go there in the body. And trust me, you want to go there. But unless you go there, you can never go there. And I want to go there. Do you want to go there? Do we want to go there? Yeah. I want to go there. You need to do it now, not later. This isn't something you can procrastinate and kick down the, you know, kick down the road like we do working out. Like... Something I got to do, man. I got to know. What does it look like? What do I want to happen? What does everything, like cause Cardone talked about, like a jet, a private island, a ranch, a helicopter, like all this other stuff. And I'm like, this dude is thinking a whole nother level, man. Because most people, and, and, and guess what? He's shopping for a private island and a ranch right now. And he told me that a year ago. Who's going to commit to doing that? Yes. Who's going to commit to doing that? Yes. Okay, good. Number three is on the screen. He talked about removing limiting beliefs. There is a, there is a, ment we all have this mental cap, this lid that we can raise from time to time, but we always seem to bump into it. And what I mean by that is, I am still not thinking big enough and I'm trying to push my lid, I'm trying to push the envelope because I have never said I would do anything and then not at least come close to doing it. Which means I've not said I'm gonna do enough big stuff yet. A limiting belief is something that is mentally holding you back from taking that next step in your life, from taking that next level in your life from going to a whole new you. I've had several in my life, maybe the way I was raised, maybe things I was told, maybe teachers taught me, whatever, but there were several things that have held me back from taking that next step in my life, that next level in my life. 
One of the main ones years ago was I thought I don't need to invest money in myself for me to get there. That's a problem. And I was wrong. Because I spent 15 grand to go to a conference three years ago, changed everything. And I didn't feel comfortable spending the 15 grand. But man, am I glad I did. But the only thing that holds somebody back is the fear piece. It's, I don't know that I want to pull out my credit card. I don't know. I don't know if I should. I don't know if I want to. I don't know if it'll help. For you to be the best you, you have to, whether you like it or not. Another one that's really held me back previously, the money one, I, like I, I, I spend more money on myself than probably anybody in the insurance industry. I'm like, I don't care. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Because I keep learning. The more I know, the, more, the farther I go. So I'm like, just feed me. Another big one is always caring about what everybody else thought. Most people care what everybody else thinks. A lot of us care about what our family thinks, what our friends think. For example, my in-laws, when I first got married, told my wife, why doesn't he get a real job? Mm. I bet they're glad I didn't now. Because <laughs> <laughs> life would suck. And the thing is, I'm in a position to where if not now in the very short amount of time, I could have bought whatever company they wanted me to have a job at. <laughs> That's a whole other level of thinking. Who's sitting there thinking, dude, I've had people in my life tell me, go get a real job. But there are more millionaires in the insurance industry, industry in the world. So why isn't everyone in the world telling everyone else, go become an insurance agent instead of go get a real job? That's the piece that makes zero sense to me. And that woke something up inside of me that day they said that. I told my wife, just wait and see. Because I know that as long as I don't quit, life's going to get really good. And as good as I think my life is at this point, they ain't seen nothing yet. And as good as you think your life is at this moment, you ain't seen nothing yet. And as okay as it maybe is, or as bad as it is, guess what? It is going to get a lot better. But you've got to be able to push that lid farther and farther and farther and farther. And you've got to remove those things that are mentally holding you back from taking that next step in life. Because it's happening right now, whether you see it or not whether you notice it or not. And the part of worrying about what everybody else thought, that held me back from doing a conference. That held me back from doing a tour. That held me back from having a video guy that travels with us everywhere. That held me back from putting out 2,000 videos on YouTube. That held me back from having five companies doing 10 million bucks or more. I worried about what everybody else thought. That's a problem. <laughs> Because who's the only person that really matters? You, because if you don't believe it, it can't ever happen anyway. There's going to be several things that are going to be limiting beliefs that are mentally holding you back. It's like you've got your paw, not papa, but paw on your brain. And you're not letting go. Let go. Try to figure out what they are. I want to challenge you right now. Start to think about what is those, what are those pieces that are really actually holding me back? Is it I'm afraid to spend money? Because guess what? For you to make a lot of money, you gotta spend a lot more. The more I spend, the more I make. I know it's not popular to hear in the insurance industry, but guess what? I stopped caring what people thought. At least last year for sure. Because nobody else did an in-person conference 
with hundreds of people post-COVID. But we did. Because it's not okay to quit. It's not okay to fail. It's not okay to choose to not show up. What kind of example would I be setting for the rest of the industry if I just, nope, not this year. Agents need it this year, the next year, and every year after. And really, I try to go to events every month, every quarter at the absolute worst. Why? Because of the motivation I receive, the nuggets I receive, and how much I've seen my life change by the power of events. That's why we're doing this for free. Because there's going to be a few in the room that have a freaking shift. And we're going to look back in a year and say, oh my gosh, man. Just because they showed up, spent $4.50 in gas and came to a free event and sat there and, and took notes and stayed engaged and learned and hooped and hollered and yelled and danced and everything else. I haven't seen anybody dance yet, but who knows? We'll see. The question is, what are those mental barriers in your life? What are those things that are mentally holding you back from taking that next step? Rule number six, effort, effort. I learned a long time ago that I was never gonna be the best salesperson in the world. I knew a long time ago I was never gonna be the most knowledgeable and know the most about every carrier in the world. I knew that I wanted to earn $100,000 my first year and there were a lot of other agents in the office that were doing a lot better than me. But the only thing I could choose to do was outwork them. And I didn't just outwork them by a little bit. I outworked them by a lot. I outworked them so bad before they knew it. They were the ones making a quarter million dollars a year. And they're coming to this new agent like, what, what in the world are you doing, man? Instead of the other way around. That's a problem for them. <laughs> man, what's your goal? If you don't have, don't have one yet, make it up for me. What's your, what's, what, what's your goal? How much money would you like to make in 2021? I'm going to try something. Uh, I want to be able to pay off my mom's house. Boom. So that's my biggest goal. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. And I want to make it to more than six figures this year. Good. Good. Love it. Give her a hand. That's great. <laughs> and what's your name? Janet. Janet? Awesome, Janet. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing that too. 100 grand or more, okay? In 2021, there's only three things specifically when you, as you're taking notes that could hold Miss Janet back from doing that. Only three. The first is effort. It's effort. She can choose to show up and put in the work or not. Effort's a choice. It's an action, but it's still a decision. Number two is skill. She may not have the skill at this point for that to be reality. But if we want to learn the skill, we can, can't we? Because what we could do is we could watch training videos every morning, we could role play, we could, we could listen to the art of closing the sale by Brian Tracy every morning in the car. Like we could do whatever it took to get better. We could listen to our calls, we could record, we could do everything we wanted to to improve our skill, but it takes effort to skill up. It takes effort for your skill to go up. And who's okay admitting right now, dude, my skill's gotta go up for this thing to change, man. For this thing to get really good, my skill has gotta, it's gotta go. Okay, number three, knowledge. Knowledge. Miss Janet may not know enough right now to make that a reality. Guess what? If I want to download David Camper's brain into mine and know everything he knows, eventually I could. True or false? Yes. Which means I could put in the effort to increase the amount of knowledge. There's only three things that can hold you back from hitting whatever goal you want. Effort, skill, or knowledge. You either don't put in enough effort you either don't have enough skill at this point in your career or you don't have enough knowledge. 
But all three are a choice. All three are possible for you. No matter, because some of you are going to be like, dude, I'm okay working hard. I'm in. That's fine. That's cool. Okay, great. But I'm not very good. I can tell you, you can get great if you want to. You may say, dude, I don't know a lot. I don't know enough. I want to know more. 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 I need to know more for this to happen. You're right. And you can. That's what's the beauty of it. All of this is a choice. Miss Janet can put in the work. She can get really good and she can get really knowledgeable. And then life will get really good. It's a choice. It's a decision. And it's not an option. Rule number seven, which leads right into this, which is train daily. In our office, we train twice a day with our sales team, 8.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon. We go for 15, 20 minutes in the morning, 15, 20, sometimes 30, each way. We listen to sales training videos, we're breaking down what we learned. We're role playing something specific. When we role play, we're role playing a specific part of a call or a specific part of a cell. And we're role playing the same thing the whole week, by the way. We're not changing it up every 14 minutes and trying something new and, and changing like, you know, we are getting really good at this this week. What's the close? How do we ask for the business? What card would you like to put that on? What card would you like to put that on? What card would you like to put that on? Not, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> if that's in your vocab, please remove it forever. <laughs> because people will give you a lot of reasons why they're not going to buy. And they will make up stuff. They will lie to you. And they will tell you they need to think about it when they don't. Okay? That I know for a fact. We practice and role play a specific piece the entire week. You say, I mean, and, and you guys can make excuses. I mean, you can make excuses for anything, right? Like, oh, I, I don't have someone to... I don't, have anybody, I don't have anybody. I'm alone. I role played in the mirror. I would record my in-home appointments just for me and I would listen to them on the way back to the office. I would listen to The Art of Closing the Cell by Brian Tracy in my car on repeat for years until I had to re-download it because the, the CDs were so messed up. Why? Because me getting really good is a choice. I choose whether I get great or not. It ain't up to anybody else. Most people fail in the industry and they're like, hey, it was my trainer's fault. My manager didn't help me. He didn't download his brain into me. He didn't make the calls for me. I didn't get to do all these role plays and I didn't get to go do all these ride alongs, everything else, right? Doesn't mean we can't get great. But to get great, you have to train every single day. It's not a choice. It's not an option. It's not a nice to do. It's a must do. And you have to train every single day, whether you feel like it or not. Whether you want to role play with your mirror, you know, because it's weird and cheesy and awkward. But dude, if you can't do, if you can't get great talking to you, you'll never get great talking to anybody else. Trust me. And if you don't think you're good, guess what they think. <laughs> You want to think you're phenomenal. Not to the point where you stop training, though. Because you can always get better. Who believes that? Who knows that to be true? Who's going to make it happen in 2021? And who's committing right now to, dude, I am going all in. I got the guts. I'm committing. And I want to win. You're like, I want to go there. Miss Grace is like, I want to go there. And I'm ready. <laughs> and she already tore it up her first AEP. So imagine where she's going to get. You want to go there. You want to get really good. I truly believe at this point, not from an arrogant standpoint, you can put me in any sales situation in the world, whether we're selling RVs, I don't, I'm mosquito spray, I don't care what we're selling. <laughs> and I don't actually need to know as much about the product as I think, and I'll close the deal. Sales is sales. Closing is closing. Fact finding is fact finding. Building rapport is building rapport. Building value, creating engagement. Like, why do you guys think I'm tapping the marker on, on, on the board for 36 seconds? 
814 times. Because i got to keep your attention. Who's going to train every day? Rule number eight, invest in yourself. It's not an option. It's not I may do it. It's I have to do it. Who has the courage to say, you know what? I did not invest in myself as much as I should have in 2020. Guess what? That's about to change. And I'm about to help you change it. Because life got really good for me. Not when I started spending more money on leads. Not when I started spending more money on um, a car. Not when I started spending more money on a home. Not when I started spending more money on my wife, as much as she believes that to be true, okay? Not when I started doing all these other things. Life got really good when I started investing in me. Life got really good when I started investing in my personal development, my self-improvement. And I'm about to give a few people the option to spend more time with me. Who doesn't believe, but who knows that I can help you? Who knows that when I help you, your money and your income and your revenue goes up? Am I right, Joe and David? Come on now. True or true? True. And who's also sitting here thinking, dude, when I get the opportunity, if you give me an opportunity, I'm actually going to go, go all in. I'm not just going to say it. I'm not just going to raise my hand and stand up and say, I'm going to commit, but I'm actually going to really commit in 2021 and go all in and say, I am going to invest in myself like I've never invested before. Because it's not an option. It is, I've got to be really good. The car I drive doesn't, doesn't matter from an income standpoint. It really doesn't, right? The house I live in, how much money I spend on my kids I don't have yet, right? Whatever. For me to get great, for, for it to get to where it is impossible for me to quit, I've got to spend it on me. Up here, in here, all year long. I now, and, and, and you should be spending over 10% of your personal income on just making you better because you want your income to go up. Watch this. You want your income to go up. Try spending money on you because guess what? If you're making 60K, 30K, 400K, you're going to hit a lid. You're going to hit a capacity. We're going to the 1% Mastermind next week in Arizona, and Derek bought his own plane ticket. I'm not paying for it for you. You're investing in yourself because it's going to pay off. I spoke at Nate Offered's SWAT event in Dallas. Three of my salespeople paid for their own ticket. Nate would have probably gave them one. I said, don't. Because you have to pay to pay attention. You want your income to go up? Raise the lid. You want your income to go up? Spend more money on you. you want to help a lot more people? Make you a lot better. Make you a lot better. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it. See you in there. Hey, what's up 8% Nation, Jeff Root here. I am managing partner over at Digital BGA. Uh, we're a 100% telesales life insurance agency. I'm also author of the Digital Life Insurance Agent, which is the number one best